Hi guys, how are you doing? It is Mark here from The Little Supplement Company. I'm going to do another video blog. This one is going to be a little bit contentious with people, with personal trainers, with nutritionalists, with dietitians. Um, I'm just going to share my personal experiences uh, of working with diets. And it's diet we're going to talk about today. Now, a lot of people are sort of setting their ways on, on a diet. Um, people who advise on diets tend to stick to the one kind of diet. So some people are very, let's look at the different types of diets. So some people who do diets for others are very into keto. And a lot of people who get into keto don't always do it the correct way. So I'll discuss how to do a proper keto diet very briefly. Um, some other people who, I'm, I mean, I have my favorites. I like carb backloading, but I'll also use keto where it's necessary. And I'll use intermittent fasting where I feel it's necessary. It's down to the, to me, it's down to the individual. But you will get some people that will just do keto. You'll get some people that will just give you uh, broccoli, rice, and chicken five times a day. Not that interesting. Not that nutrient variation um, of different, you know, different proteins, different sources of carbohydrates, different, different sources of vegetables. You know, it's about variety to me. And you're going to get people who are into the counting macro category and you're going to get people like me that don't really get into that too much unless it's required. So I'm going to talk about this just quite openly and freely, as I always do. And, you know, I'll put myself up there to be shot down um, 100%. <laughs> it's the way the industry is. Everyone has an opinion. I've been working in the health, fitness, sports and wellness industry since I left education. So quite a long time because I'm old. Um, and over that year, over that uh, sort of length of time, I find that one or two things you do pick up over the, the years is A, knowledge. Um, knowledge is all about reading, courses and talking to people with experience. The second thing I feel that you pick up over a longer period of time is experience. So. I've worked with thousands of people from people that just come into the store to talk to me to want to lose a bit of weight, maybe to want to lose a bit of weight for a holiday or a wedding or, or just because they feel better or they've got out of shape and they're depressed. Fantastic. So I deal with those kind of um, people. And I deal with people who are going to the gym and want to look really aesthetically pleasing. They've always wanted a six pack. Maybe they're hitting their 40s and 50s and going, you know what, I don't want this middle age spread that every all of my friends are getting. I want to keep lean. Brilliant. So, you know, we work with them people. I also have the privilege of working with athletes, um, boxers who need to hit weight. So it's a different kind of diet I would use to them. So with a lot of boxers who need to hit weight, um, or fighters in general, you know, they, they need to lose weight but keep their energy levels up. Now that's an art in itself. So what a lot of people do is give them a keto diet, no carbs, worst thing you can do for a fighter. They need energy, they need power. Um, and then you get the bodybuilding and physique athletes and, and uh, photo shoot models. And these guys and girls have to be shredded, lean, tight, eight packed, looking amazing. And that's where I'm amazing getting into the macro counting side of things. However, let's, where do we start? So I'll put a few little notes down. Thank you very much. And where do we start? So, do you count calories? Yes or no? There's a big argument on this in itself. Well, counting calories could be very beneficial for some people who like structure in their life, they like to know where they are. Now, to lose weight, ideally, you need to be in a negative calorie deficit. What that means in English is you need to be burning more calories than you're consuming. But people say it's calories in, calories out, isn't it? No. Let me stop you there. No. And that's going to be contentious. It's the quality of calories in and the quality of how you burn those calories out. It's not, right, I'm going to, I'm burning 2,000 calories a day, so I'm going to take in 1,500 1,000 calories a day. Now, if I did that with slow release carbohydrates, good quality proteins and essential fats as my calorie input, and then maybe it's a higher GI carb after training for the for reasons that, you know, a, a, a experiment if you don't understand the, the system, then fantastic, you will lose weight. Unless there's thyroid issues or another, you will lose fat weight. If I was to have 2,000 calories I'm burning out and I want to ingest 1,500 calories and that was Mars bars, crisps and pizza, 
same calorific intake, are you going to lose fat? No, you're not. And you're going to feel lethargic and you're going to feel pretty crappy. Whereas on the other diet, where it was clean, good quality calories, you're going to feel amazing. Even though you've got less calories coming in as you but you're still going to feel amazing because of all the nutrients, the nutrient-dense foods you're eating. So this is where, to me, variety is the key. So don't just have fish, rice and broccoli five times a day. You know, where the hell is the fun in that? We're here to live life, not to be, oh, I'm going to eat this crap again. Now and again, that's a great meal, but variety. You know, where's the, the tuna? Have prawns, have some steak now and again. You know, that kind of thing. Go down a vegetarian route for a bit. Get your proteins in, get your carbs in. Mix your carbs up. Sweet potato, jack potato, boiled potato, pasta, you know, whole grain pasta. Rices, different rices, you know, from your pilau rice to wild rice, you know, boiled rice. So mix it up. Do you use sauces? Well, it depends again on who you are. If you're just an everyday person trying to look good for a holiday or a wedding, of course, use your sauces in there. Get them in. Um, so it's about you as an individual to me. And every diet I've ever done, I've looked at the individual. We've talked about what they need to achieve. We've talked about what foods they actually like. And then we've taken it from there and I've put a little package together for them where they can take it away. Now, where we're looking at more professional athletes, that's probably 5% of the, the diets that I get involved with, different ball games. So I'll look at macros. I'll work out how many calories they need to be losing. Um, rather than eating into muscle tissue, we need to lose fat. So it's a very much finite thing. For 95% of people, I don't really get into counting macros and things like that. So what sort of diets are available? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Um, let's go with first diet. I've written down, it's keto. Because it seems to be one of the most popular diets. Yes, you can lose a lot of weight quickly. Often, people who go on a keto diet get told to up your protein, drop your carbs so you've got no carbs at all. Is that a keto diet? No. Is that a dangerous diet? Yes. Long term, it's not very good for your health. Ooh, that's going to upset a few people straight away. Um, way to do a keto diet is keep your proteins high, absolutely. Okay, But really... Fats are the key to keto diets. So you want to be looking at about 60% of your calorific intake as fat. You're looking at about 5 to 10%, but I'd go 5% is carbohydrates. And the rest is protein. It isn't 100% protein, no carbs. That's ridiculous. If you have someone that's giving you that diet, walk away from them, don't pay them any more money, and get a different person to look after your nutritional plans. That's just not healthy and it's not right. Um, if you've got someone who knows what they're doing with a keto diet, keeping those fats high, essential fats in particular, to about 60%, the fat will drop off you. You'll not feel particularly energized for the first week, but once your body goes into that ketonic state and you're in a ketonic state where you're burning fat for energy, you've trained your body, you've switched your body into eating into fat, not muscle, Incredible, incredible diet. Would I do that long term? A lot of people do. I personally wouldn't. Well, that's me. Uh, so there's your keto diet. There's a good quality, proper keto diet. And you can download YouTube books and e-books and that for 40 or 50 quid or dollars. Just there, I've given it to you for free. Okay, so keto diet's number one. Another diet that is very, very popular at the minute is fasted cardio. Now this again is a great diet if you got the nutrients correct. So you know get an idea of the sort of the meal sizes and the, and the calorific intake you could without getting anal. You don't have to be weighing your food and stuff unless you're uh, you're really on it. And if that's the way you're gonna go, go that way, absolutely. However, if not, let's just kind of eat with your eyes. It sounds daft, but you know, you find out if you're feeling you know satisfied after a meal and you're not too full, you're not bloaty and you're not hungry 10 minutes later, great. There's your, there's your amount there. And with a fasted cardio diet, um, or, or a, a, sorry, intermittent fasted diet, my apologies, then um, what you're gonna look at, there's a couple I'd, I'd look at doing. I would either do something called a 16-8. So you have basically 16 hours of fasting, no food, 
eight hours in which you put your calories into, your food into those eight hours. So a nice easy one, for example, for me, in the shop, if I was gonna do that sort of thing, the thing that would suit my lifestyle, I'd have my first meal at 12, and I would stop eating eight hours after that. I don't mean eat all the way through. So I'd have something to eat every probably two and a half hours for that, and I'd stop eating at eight. There's my eight hours eating, then I've got fasting for 16. If you're looking, you probably lose about a pound, potentially two pounds a week of fat on that. If your diet, if your rest of your diet, you know, your, your, your training's right, you're doing a bit of cardio, maybe it's a bit of circuits in the weights, that kind of thing, or maybe it's a couple of classes a week, you'll lose some. So people say a pound of fat a week's not a lot, Mark. You know, give that two months down the line. Yes, it is. You know, and that'll keep off because you've lowered your set point, which is a different topic altogether. But we can actually lower our our, our weight that we're comfortable with. So, you know, we could go down from 15 stone very gradually down to 13 stone over a period of time, losing a pound or two pounds of fat a week. Our body's comfort zone would have changed to 13 stone. It'll stay around there. If you do these fatty diets, like, you know, the wrong keto diet where you're losing muscle and fat, you drop the weight quickly and you get out to 13 stone, your body then screams to get back up to where you were and it puts a bit more on. So you end up at 15 and a half stone. And you panic and Google it again, and then you end up at 16 stone. This is the worst thing you can do because it has this rebound effect. Your body's reacting to these harsh, quick diets that are out there. Nice and gently does, gently does it. So a fasted diet, 16, 8, could be perfect for you as long as that eight hours is nutritionally good food. And variety, varied. What else? If you want to up the ante and you want quicker results, then for a couple of weeks to a month you could look at fasting for tw um, 24 you have 20 hours of no food you get your food in the four hour window a little harsher and i would recommend certainly with actually both of them it when you're fasting get some amino acids in your in your water and that that's a great way of keeping your muscle integrity working so 20 hours without food four hours with food you're gonna lose a bit more fat. You're gonna lose three to four pounds uh, potentially a week, but I would only do that short term. So there's your intermittent fasting. The other thing that I like to work with is, is carb cycling, um, where you know, this is more for people who go to the gym. So if you're training in the gym, you might have a higher carbohydrate day for energy for the training. And when you're not training or you're doing light training, you might go to like medium day for light training, very low carb day for, for no training. Um, that might mean for some people, you know, you have a, a heavy day on Monday and a Wednesday, so you have your high carbs day there. You might do some light training Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, medium carb. You might not train all of the weekend, very low carb. That works incredibly because your body is constantly shifting. Keeps your metabolic rate rocking, works a treat. Very good with physique athletes, bodybuilders and that sort, if you can get at that right. Um, brilliant, it's been around for ages and it works. So that is another one. And the final one I'll talk about is something called carb backloading. I work a lot with this actually, with particularly athletes or general, general people that are busy. I'll give you an example, I've worked this with, with, with this one for bodybuilders that have won or got to the British finals and things like that. So it works a treat for retaining muscle and losing, and losing body fat. However, a couple of years ago, a good friend of mine, who is a good friend now, and just met the, the lady about three or four years ago, came into my shop in uh, January, typically. Mark, I wanna lose um, as much weight as possible for summer. Got a wedding to go to. She had her own reasons why she wanted to lose weight. I want your biggest fat, best fat burner. Got chatting, she ate one meal a day, and I uh, didn't drink enough water, and she wanted a fat burner. So I said, I'm not selling you a fat burner. We had a heated discussion, or she had a heated discussion with me, and I said, I don't want to sell you a fat burner. It's not the right, I don't want your money. Don't, don't do not it, it's gonna be wrong. She ended up coming around to my way of thinking, and we looked at a carb backloading diet, and we introduced a multivitamin and a fish oil. So they were the supplements, the carb backloading diet, we went through the diet with food she liked, she worked night shift. I'm not gonna mention names or anything, be unprofessional, but she was a nurse. She walked about three to four miles a night around the wards. So her cardio was quite good. And with that, by the time she came to a wedding, which was August, so we're looking at eight, eight months later, um, she had lost, <laughs> wait for this, 
Didn't do a gym thing, never joined a gym, didn't have a personal trainer. This was just diet and her lifestyle. Busy woman, busy family, work night shifts. She lost seven stone and she's kept it off two years later. She still looks amazing. People who she's known since school still walk past her in the street, not recognizing her. Brilliant. And that's a carb backloading diet. So all these diets work. It's about what suits you and your lifestyle best. If you go and you just, you know, you're a normal person you, and you're going to want to go and measure out and weigh food, the chances of you sticking to that are slim. Let's be honest. I wouldn't. And I like working out and stuff. So I would suggest get a diet that suits you. Talk to your, if you've got a personal trainer, talk to them about, I don't want to weigh food out. You know, there's some good apps out there. There's some crap apps out there. I worked with a guy a few years ago. Um, we ended up doing one of the... Uh, I think it was one of the PT courses that are out there. We did one of them together. Great lad. And he'd been two years on an app measuring his macros. And I said, oh, wow, how much muscle weight have you put on? Uh, two pounds. Okay, how long have you been doing this? Uh, 18 months. <laughs> Let me have a word. Biff your bat off. Let's have a look at your diet. Got them onto a carb cycling. And uh, you're looking about six or seven pounds later eight months down the line, which is a lot when it's muscle. So some of the apps, you know, be wary about paying for an app unless it's really good. Read the reviews and talk to people who've used them, please. Um, so that's kind of a little bit on the, on the diets. Worst thing you can do and the most popular thing most people do, particularly ladies, not being sexist, but particularly ladies, is if they go on a diet, they tend to eat once a day. The worst thing you can do, it slows your metabolic rate down, your, your, your basal metabolic rate will shut down. You tend to be going into starvation mode. So what happens is when you do eat that food, you get store that food as fat because you think you're starving. Your body thinks it's starving. Um, if I was to train a sumo wrestler, that's the kind of thing I would do. One big meal at the end of the day before bed. And that's what a lot of people do to think they're trying to lose weight. Little and often. The ideal would be every three hours, have something small and healthy. Bang, snack as well, nice little snacks. You can use protein shakes if you're, if you're on the go and you're busy, uh, absolutely. You know, you can use like the, the, the protein wafers. We do these wafer bars, which is a great healthy snack in between. You know, or just look at food and, and, and plan it out. Um, what else was the, uh, yeah, the other thing most people don't do enough of, water. Drink water, 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 water. A lot of people don't do water after air that we consume and need to live on, okay? So we can go maybe a minute without air, we die. We can only go days without water, we die. Food, weeks, weeks. So after air, water is one of the most important nutrients we get in life. 60 to 70% of our bodies, water. We need to drink water. The amount of people I speak to daily goes, don't like water. I can have 12 coffees though. I got to that point, I think when I hit 45, you know, I'm not even going to try and talk to you. You want help, drink three to four litres of water a day. There you go. It'll work for you. It'll get you what you want. You can't do that. Don't come crying to me. I've told you what you want. Maybe it's not the best bedside manner sort of way to be, but I can't be bothered anymore. I give people gold for free. You know, I help people. So if you're really serious about this, water. Um, Little and often is the key on that. If you are just looking to go, look, I just want to tidy my diet up. I just want to eat what I've been eating, my three meals a day. Can I lose weight? Of course you can. Remember, good calories it coming in, but more calories being burnt out. That might be walking the dog for an extra 20 minutes in the morning and get some hills in just to increase that fat burning uh, mode. Do it on an empty stomach, weight will come up. You're starting to burn more calories than you're consuming. The calorie fit breakdown for just someone that wants a nice healthy diet to me would be 30 to 35 percent carbs five to ten percent fats make up the rest in protein so if you did five percent fat 35 percent carbs 60 percent protein that would be a really healthy basic diet for you okay so any supplements i would recommend of course there is one of the first things I would recommend would be if you've just started a diet and you want to get on it, 
try a detox first. Now I do a one called a rhubarb tea, tea detox, um, and it's phenomenal. So it increases, it gets rid of fecal plaque out of your intestines, which are like 26 feet long, it takes out all the gunk. So you start to absorb your nutrients from your food much more efficiently. Doing the detox alone can lose you actually body weight. Some people lose half a stone in a couple of weeks quite easily. It makes the tummy flatter. Um, it stops you bloating after food. It gets rid of any parasites and pathogens and nastiness in the guts. It cleanses you brilliantly. So we do one called 21st Century Detox Rhubarb Complex. It's amazing. That's where I would start if I was really serious about it. And I would add in a good multivitamin and a good fish oil. Probably go with something like the Viridian uh, fish oil and a Viridian or a Terra Nova multivitamin without doubt. Another great fish oil is Wiley's obviously. Um, would I go straight into a fat burner? I'd, I'd wait to the fat burner until you hit a plateau and you think, I've really tried everything else. What should I do? I would look at a decent fat burner. We do a couple of very good ones. We do um, a very good stimulant one called Mega Shred. And we do some non-stimulant ones that are incredibly powerful um, in terms of thermogenic. They, they melt fat off you as long as you're exercising. If you're not, don't waste your money. Most fat burners I've seen on the marketplace are rubbish. They want your money, like taking caffeine, waste the money, be careful with fat burners. Something I don't recommend unless it's necessary. And I talk to someone about whether or not they need it. So there's a little rundown of a contentious issue called diet. I hope it was of interest to you. If you've managed to listen to this all the way through, you're amazing because you've listened to it for 21 and a half minutes, which is quite a long time. When I start speaking, I think I'm speaking for two minutes and it always ends up being too long. So I've probably lost most of you. But if you do do a diet, let me know how you're getting on. Let me know which diet you went on. And if I can help along the way, we do get a lot of messages, I must admit. So I do try and get back to most of them. But, you know, they, they get fired in from all over the place but I will try and answer any questions. So guys, as always, Mark Hamilton, The Little Supplement Company, thanks for listening, and I will speak to you all very soon indeed. Have a great day. Water, water, water. That's all I'm going to say to you. Bye.